Okay, so let's talk about the best and worst way to solve this algebra equation. So we have uh, 7 over 13x is equal to 5 over 17. Now feel free to use a calculator, but to, I want to encourage you to not use a calculator. But to, I am saying that if you want to use one, go ahead and do so. But if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution here in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this equation. And I'm going to show you a common uh, way that a lot of uh, people solve equations like this, and it's not a great way. Matter of fact, you want to avoid this. So I'll get into all of that in the video. But uh, let's take a look at the solution here. So again, we have 7 over 13x, and that is 7 over 13x like so, not 7 over 13x in the denominator, right? So just to be clear here, uh, clear here, excuse me, uh, that's what this is saying. So 7 over 13 uh, x is equal to 5 over 17. All right, so what is x equal to? Well, the correct solution is x is equal to 65 over 119. All right, now, if you got this right, well, that is fantastic. You definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like uh, Mr. You Too Math Man, I got this correct, but uh, I'm curious. What are you talking about uh, this way, you know, not to solve this problem? Well, even if you got this right, you definitely, uh, well, I'm going to encourage you to watch the rest of this video because I want to talk about something that a lot of people do, especially when they are using a calculator to help them solve a linear equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so here's our equation. And the first thing I want to uh, kind of highlight here is uh, these fractions are written with slanted fraction bars. There's nothing wrong if you like stylistically to write your fractions this way with slanted fraction bars, but that's kind of okay if you're like in basic math, arithmetic. If you're getting into algebra, you really want to uh, write your fractions with horizontal fraction bars like this. It's just um, a much easier and everything in algebra in terms of worth working with algebraic expressions are going to have nice horizontal fraction bars, especially when you're working with expressions like a rational expression, something like this. So just get in the habit uh, of uh, writing your fractions with these horizontal fraction bars. Okay, now when we're looking at an equation, what's the objective of an equation? Well, we want to solve an equation. Let's take a look at a real easy example, like 2x is equal to 10. Okay, so 2x is 2 times a number x, a variable x. So if I uh, asked you 2 times what number is 10, you would say, well, 2 times what number is 10? Well, that number's got to be 5. You would be correct, right? So uh, if we're trying to solve this equation, and we already know what the answer is, how do we get 5? Well, what we're trying to do is get x by itself. Okay, x by itself on one side of the equation and one number on the other side, that number would uh, is going to be the solution. So here we have 2 times x. So what we can do to kind of undo multiplication is divide 2 by 2. Okay, 2 divided by 2 is 1 or 1x one or just x. Okay, 1x is x. But if I divide 2 on this side of the equation, I also have to divide 2 on this side of the equation. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. So uh, x or 1x is equal to 5. All right, so that's just a quick basic example and if you think about it, this equation is effectively the same thing, right? We have a number in front of x is equal to another number. Now, some of you might be saying, well, uh, let's see here. Can I just simply divide both sides of the equation by 7 over 13? Uh, indeed, you can, okay? But that's kind of a messy way to do it. There's a far better way to solve equations with fractions. And let me just show you this right now. So, uh, again, the objective is to get x by itself on one side of the equation. Now, if I have this 7 over 13, what could I do to this number, this fraction, to get a 1? I want a 1x. I don't want a 7 over 13x. Well, what you can do is flip this fraction upside down. That's called the reciprocal, and multiply it. Okay, so 13 over 7 times 7 over 13. If I multiply across like this, this is just 1. Okay, all these cross cancel. You're going to get the same uh, number in the numerator and the same number in the denominator. So you're going to get 1, and that's what I want. But here's the deal. In algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same operation to the other side. So over here, we need to multiply this side of the equation by seven over, uh, or 13 over 7. Excuse me. 
Okay, so this is right here what we need to do in order to get the solution. This is the best approach to deal with equations like this. So here is the answer. Okay, so we have 7 uh, over 13x is equal to 5 over 17. We're going to take the reciprocal of this fraction right there, 13 over 7, and multiply both sides of it. Now remember, I did say you can use your calculator, okay, because we're going to have to do some calculations here. So 5 times 13 is 65, and then 17 times 7 is 119. So this is the correct answer. All right, so um, again, if you have a decimal, we'll, uh, just hold that thought, and uh, we're going to get into that in just one second, because this... Now, before we continue on, I have a quick question for you. Are you enjoying this content? Well, if you are, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. I will definitely uh, appreciate that. Also, if you need additional help in math, check out my math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I'm going to give you uh, some specific recommendations at the end of this video. All right, so let's get back to the problem. All right, so let's go ahead and get to what I am talking about. What is the worst way? What is something that you never want to do in algebra? Well, this is it. Uh, and uh, this is really typical of students who do not like fractions. And I get it. They're like, oh, my goodness, I'm looking at fractions. I don't want to deal with fractions. You know, um, and, and I was the same way, I'm sure, back in school. So here is what a ton of students do, okay, and which is actually not uh, it's not a bad strategy. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense to me why they would do it. They have their calculator. Like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my calculator here, and I'm just going to change these fractions to decimals. Now, some calculators, um, matter of fact, a lot of the modern calculators, like uh, scientific calculators, like the TI-30, I want to say, well, there's a ton of them. You can switch from decimals to fractions, and that's fine because, you know, if you're like, well, you can actually uh, use uh, fractions in your calculator, but a lot of students don't even realize that. So what they'll do is they'll go, all right, 7 divided by 13, they just start turning these things into decimals. So 7 divided by 13 is going to be the decimal 0 0.5384615. Well, this goes on and on and on and on, okay? Uh, 5 over 17, if you turn that into a decimal, you're going to get 0 0.29411764. So what students would do, again, they'll change their fractions into decimals, and then they will kind of just round off. They'll be like, all right, let me see here. I'm not definitely not using all of this. So maybe I'll just uh, take the first three decimals here and the first three decimals here. Uh, place values, right? 0.538x is equal to uh, 0.294. Now, this is not a bad strategy, but it's something that you don't want to do because what's going on here is now you're estimating, okay? You're going to have an, an estimate as your solution, okay? Whereas the actual answer uh, 65 over 119, I believe it is. That is the precise 100% correct answer. Okay, it's not an estimate; it's an exact answer. And you don't want to start messing around, uh, and, you know, unless you're taking like a science course or something like that, where uh, the teacher may not really care too much about the mathematics of, you know, you're they're only looking for a decent approximation. But you don't want to do it this way because obviously it's pretty easy to solve these equations with fractions. But let's go ahead and just uh, finish this e equation out with these decimal estimates. So if I have 0.538x is equal to 0.294, so to divide or to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 0.538. So we got two nine, uh, 0.294 divided by 0.538. Again, I did say you can use your calculator. And when you do this, you're going to get another decimal, uh, and it's going to go uh, pretty far, 0.5464 on and on, on, on and on and on, excuse me. <laughs> so let's see how this compares to the actual answer. So the actual answer is 65 over, one, over 119. Now, if you take 65 and divide it by 119, you're going to get a decimal 0.54621 on and on and on and on. Now, if you take a look at this estimate, it may not seem to be too bad. You got uh, 0.5464. Here you have 62, okay? Now, some of you might say, well, this doesn't seem to be too bad. You know, they seem pretty close, and they are reasonably close, but it's something that you do not want to do because in algebra and in mathematics, you're going to, um, uh, at least from a math teacher standpoint, 
they want to see the exact solution, okay, the exact solution to uh, an equation or, you know, some sort of problem. Uh, they do not want to see you doing this, okay? So if you do this, your teacher is going to basically say, oh, they don't know how to solve equations with fractions, right? So it's, a, it's something that you want to stay away from. Now, if you are in a, let's say, um, let's say you forgot, you're, and this is some sort of test or something like that, and you totally forgot. You're like, oh my gosh, I forgot what that YouTube math man told me about solving equations with fractions. Now, if you got your, and you can use a calculator and you did this, you know, that's logical and it's better than nothing, okay? As a matter of fact, you'll get, you can get a reasonable answer. But again, the main idea here is that you do not want to use that as a primary technique or method to solve equations with fractions. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math algebra and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.